Hi, I'm David O'Loughlin. I'm the Mayor of the City of Prospect and I'm delighted to bring you this 1955 TR3 Triumph Roadster. It's a beautiful car, Salvador Blue, a very rare colour. We're delighted to have it. We've had it for about a couple of years, done a little bit of work on it, purring like a kitten right now. This year it's going in the beta version. We're very proudly putting it in, knowing that it's almost certain to get all the way there this year, unlike last year, which we don't talk about anymore. Love to see you there, Beta Birdwood this year. All right, so this is the Triumph 1955. You can tell it's a TR3 by the black and red badge here that says TR3, not to be confused with the 3A, which came after it, which is a blue and white badge. But the more uh, particular example here of the TR3 is this small mouth here. The TR3A came right out to here. The TR2 before this had the same size grille, but set back inside. So this is distinctively a TR3. Um, this one has had the extra spotlights added and the extra stone guards on the headlights, but the beautiful styling of this car is why we bought it. We just love that swept lines on this car. It goes really beautifully with our Art Deco house, even though the house was built some 15 years earlier. So this is a great example of a car that's post-war, that kept some of that beautiful styling from before World War II. This car was introduced to compete directly with the MGs of the day. And I can tell you, when it landed, it was faster, it was better handling, it was a great car. And they sold like hotcakes all across the USA, where they were raced and won several classes in their day. So these were a very much loved car back then, and certainly are now as well. I'm just running through some of the other features, if you want to, while we're on here. Um, the windscreen, of course, is removable, so you can have that uh, windswept look with these little aero screens here just to deflect some of the air away from your, uh, from your face. Um, this has the ivory interior uh, with the, uh, um, the full roof that can pop up here as a soft top. This car also has a beautiful hard top finished in Salvador Blue as well. Um, a luggage rack as well going on here. Uh, and here you can see the swept lines of the rear fenders just sweeping back. So there's cute little tail lights at the back here. This car has the solid steel wheels. This is the original production um, outfit for this car with the little Triumph centers to the, uh, to the caps here. A lot of these cars now have wire wheels. They were an option at the time. Um, we prefer these steel wheels because this is how this car was delivered in 1955. This was a Triumph demonstration car. So this was used by Triumph to uh, sell this particular vehicle uh, in Coventry or all across the UK. So this car does have a tiny bit of fame attached to it as well, which we're delighted to uh, to be able to bring to you uh, this year's Beta Birdwood. Okay, so here we can see the uh, the famous Massey Ferguson block. If you look deep down in there, but that's the only thing remaining from that old style engine. Uh, this engine's been completely uh, rebuilt, uh, but it is the same standard engine. In fact, this is the original block out of this car, uh, the original chassis number, everything about this car is original, which we're fantastically delighted to have, given that this car does have a bit of history, uh, from right from 1955. Uh, the front wheels have been upgraded to have the disc brakes now, which was an option back then. In 1957, Triumph were the first to have disc brakes as a standard item on the, in a production car, the first in the world to have that as a standard uh, for their brakes. The engine here is uh, twin SU carburetors, a four cylinder, originally uh, 1.9 litre, full of two litre. This is a wet liner motor, so you can pull out the liners here and uh, put in whole new liners with pistons and rings complete. And uh, that's exactly what's been done on this engine. Now takes it out to around about 2.1 litres. So it's about the maximum size this can be. Uh, and uh, several of these features here are original features. There's a couple of others. Look at this uh, original Lucas spray bottle here for the window wipers. Original style Lucas battery even, uh, and um, the original air cleaners here as well. Uh, and this car is in remarkably good condition, and so we're, we're really pleased to be the owners of this car now, right here in Little Old Prospect in Adelaide. Okay, this car was manufactured in 1955 in Coventry in England, where all the Triumphs were manufactured. Uh, this car was used by the uh, Triumph uh, Motor Car Company as their, uh, their journalist vehicle, so they'd uh, do the articles, they'd take people on rides, they would uh, use this to promote the vehicle. Uh, and it was fitted originally with the three-speed overdrive, which is activated here, it operates on 4th, 3rd and 2nd. Uh, it was fitted with a luggage rack with a steel hard top, uh, so it had quite a number of extras right from day dot. Um, the car was brought out to Australia by a guy who migrated here in 1988, right up in Queensland. Uh, and he owned the car and uh, did a few other alterations to it, including changing the rear axle to the uh, to the Girling axle from the Lockheed axle, 
uh, and um, looked after the car very well. It's thought that he re-sprayed it when he came out to Australia. Uh, and then when uh, when he had uh, uh, was was past driving it, he sold it complete with the original engine block and a whole pile of parts uh, to a guy down here uh, in Adelaide in 2002. And that gentleman uh, never put that engine back together, so I'm the first to have unwrapped all those parts, uh, which were wrapped up in 2002. Uh, we unwrapped them in uh, 2000 and. Uh, um, 16 and uh, that engine is now back in this car the original block uh, with the with the newer head and all the bits and pieces to make this car uh, just a beautiful car to drive now back in its original configuration with the optional disc brakes on the front which would have been fitted in around about 1956 when they were an option on this car and would have been an aftermarket addition on this car uh, we're very pleased to be the owners of it now and this car has all of its registration records dating right back to its original registration back in Coventry uh, and that is very unusual to, for a car to have all of that lineage. It also has the original axle and all the original drum brakes and all the original parts are available as well so uh, it's a great piece of motoring history uh, right here in beautiful Prospect.